hashtag ไม่สู้ก็อยู่อย่างไทย is deliciously sarcastic it means if we don't stand up and fight then we must live like the Thai people in other words like slaves now this is in reference to how the people of Myanmar unite to stand against the coup d'etat and the generals of their country Meanwhile, the people of Thailand, well, let's say half of us, roughly, give or take, about half of us call for and cheer for coup d'etats and are content to live under the rule of the generals. The question then is why? Why are we Thais like this? To answer, let's first pose another question. To whom does Thailand belong? Ladies and gentlemen, if you ask a democratist, his answer would be it belongs to the people, all 69 million of us. After all, the core value of democracy is human rights. And it is our right to live and to breathe on this land with liberty, justice, and equality under the law. But if you ask a monarchist, the reply would be it belongs to the father. And we, 69 million people, are his children. After all, the core value of monarchism is the heavenly power and the divine privilege of the kingship, and we are but pride, peasants, commoners, who live and breathe on this land at the kindness, generosity, and mercy of his majesty. Therefore, to a monarchist, his mindset operates on the concept of bun kun pendin, gratitude to the land. We Thais must have gratitude to the land, which belongs to the father, and with gratitude comes loyalty, worship, and obedience. If we are not obedient, then we are nerakun, ungrateful, traitorous. But the democratist might ask the monarchist, Dude, what are you talking about? This land belongs to the people. We even have the land deeds to prove it. So you see, what we have here is the failure of communication. Two people speaking in two different languages because they have two different mindsets. One is the democratist, the other a monarchist. And they are both absolutely correct in the context of their respective political beliefs. And therein lies the problem. The Thai political system is neither a democracy or a monarchy, but at the same time, it's a bit of both, which causes a lot of confusion. We do have elections, that's quite democratic. But we also have the less matches law and the willingness to use the law like passing out traffic tickets. It's a characteristic of an absolute monarchy. But if you study further into the Thai political system, you find that the election comes with 250 senators appointed by General Prayut Chan Ocha to elect General Prayut Chan Ocha as Prime Minister of Thailand. You also find that General Prayut Chan Ocha is ultimately responsible for passing out less majest left, right, and center like it's a ping pong show on Pattaya walking street before the pandemic. So you see, in both cases, democracy and monarchism, who's the goal between General Prayut Chan Ocha? What is the power that stands between the monarchy and the people, the power of the generals? What is the one constant that has been in power, whether from behind the curtain or up front and in your face, since the 1932 revolution, the generals. Within a year of the 1932 revolution, before there could have been any election, Prayapakwan launched a coup and became dictator for five years, 178 days. Then Black People Songkram, dictator, five years, 229 days. Since World War II and through the 1970s, most civilian leaders never lasted for more than one year. Less than a handful lasted a little over a year, like Mom Rajawong Kukrit Pramut, one year, 37 days. None lasted for longer than two years. The generals, they ruled for years and years and years, amassing fortunes in wealth and power. Saritanarat, five years, 49 days. Tanong Kiti Kachon, 9 years, 309 days. In the 1980s, we had elections, but the MPs knew to elect one person and one person only as Prime Minister, General Pem Tenosulanon, who wasn't even an MP, kind of like General Prayut. But fans of General Pem would say, dude, don't compare him to General Prayut, it's an insult. Fair enough. Then we went through a period of infant democracy, disrupted by three coup d'etats, 1991, 2006, and 2014. 
General Prayuth became dictator for over five years, then continued in power through the Thai style electoral system of 250 junta appointed senators. Ladies and gentlemen, coups and generals have been in our faces for nearly 90 years and still going strong. The question then becomes while Latin America freed itself from the cycle of coups and dictators, while South Korea and Taiwan freed themselves of dictators, while the people of Myanmar by and large unite against the coup d'etat and the generals, why then can the people of Thailand get out of this cycle? Why then is the rule of the generals remain such a constant in Thai politics? Why is there the hashtag May Su Go Yu Yang Thai? Look at the student uprising in the 1970s and in 2020 and this year. Why don't the rest of the country unite behind the students to champion democracy, rights, liberty, and equality under the law? I mean, we love this value when we watch Hollywood movies. We like Obama and Biden, not Trump, yet we vote Prayut, who's worse than Trump. Why are we Thai people so confused? Here's the answer. It is because whenever the generals use the word monarchy, immediately society is divided in half, frothing at the mouth, rhymes and reason fly out the window. So to whom does this land belong? It belongs to the generals. They have the guns and therefore the physical means to murder democracy and take power. They have monopolized the belief system of monarchism and therefore the psychological mean to divide and rule the people of Thailand. The issue is not that we don't fight, it's that we can't unite. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the victim of the most cliched political manipulation in the history of humanity. Divide and rule. The generals are the puppet masters who also carry guns. So while the people argue over monarchy and democracy, the generals are, in two words, living large. If you believe in Disrupt, please subscribe to our Facebook page at disrupt.co and become a supporter. It's only 169 baht per month. Otherwise, scan the QR code or use the Bangkok bank account number 030-8190 859 Disrupt Media Company Limited to support us whenever you like and as much as you like. Your support matters.